Yo, what's up guys, JT back here with another video. This is of course, Model Railroading the Southwest. And now what I have here today is a video on how to ballast, detail, and weather track. So we're not gonna use crazy, crazy products and crazy techniques. We're gonna use techniques and products that anybody can do and anybody can find. So let's go hit the layout and let's see how this turns out. So here are the supplies that we're gonna use to ballast. So first we have this Empire Builder Basalt from Arizona Rock and Mineral. I highly, highly recommend using Arizona Rock and Mineral. It's very, very good stuff. Also we have this Mod Podge right here. I recommend using the Mod Podge over Elmer's glue because Elmer's leaves sort of a film over stuff when it dries and Mod Podge does not. Make sure to get the matte medium one, do not get the gloss. Also we're going to use two different brushes, we're going to use a small brush and a large plush brush. So let's get started. Okay so we're going to start out by pouring the ballast down the middle of the track here. So what I do is I just cut a slit in the bag here just to make it easier to pour out. You're not going to pour out too too much, just enough to cover the top of the track or the top of the rails and then we're going to smooth it out with a brush here in a couple seconds. So once you've poured out the ballast, you want to get a large plush brush and you're going to go and smooth out the ballast over the track here. As you can see, I poured out a little too much ballast, but it's not a big deal. The only problem about pouring out a little too much ballast is that you're going to have to smooth more or push more of the ballast down the track here. And you don't want to push too hard on the brush just because you'll start to expose the road bit here just like I did here. Now if you do expose a little bit of the road bit here, you just grab a little brush and gently push it back up onto the road bed, just like this. So this brush here is about an inch wide and it fits between the rails. What you're doing now is you're trying to expose the ties here and move the rest of the ballast down the track. Gently glide the large brush across the top of the track to remove ballast from on top of the ties here. Be a little gentle, you don't want to disturb the profile of the roadbed here. Gently tap the top of the ties with the handle of the brush and what this does, it helps the ballast settle in between the ties here and helps it remove it from the rails and the top of the ties. Alrighty guys, so we're pretty much in the home stretch here. What we're doing now is we're cleaning up the area around the track and further defining the profile of the roadbed here. Also, you don't want any sort of ballast near the rails here and that is because that ballast could get caught near the wheel flanges of the locomotives and rolling stock and cause them to derail. Also, you want to remove any sort of ballast that is on top of the ties here and that is because it just really doesn't look that good. So now that I'm done using the brushes, what I like to do is use my finger and gently tap on the ballast just to make it look a little bit more uniform. Alrighty, so we're going to start gluing down the ballast here. What I use is a combination of water and alcohol to create wet water. I'll use a spray bottle and fill it with water and also add a few capfuls of isopropyl alcohol. The reason you want to use wet water is to break the surface tension of the ballast when you're applying the glue so that it goes on very nicely. Alrighty, so what I'm doing now is I'm gently applying the Mod Podge to the track here. And you want to do it gently because you don't want to disturb the ballast here. And what I use here is a mixture of one part Mod Podge and one part water. And I just add that to the dropper here. So when adding the Mod Podge to the ballast here, you really, really want to saturate the entire area. And I know what you may be thinking. That's a lot of glue and it's going to stay looking white. Well, let me assure you, this is going to dry completely clear and it's going to look very good. Alrighty guys, so here are the supplies that we're going to use to paint the track. We have these Vallejo paints here. You can get these at Hobby Lobby. These are really good paints guys. You guys got to try these out. Also we have this raw umber from Walmart. And we have this little small brush here. I recommend getting a ton of these brushes. They're very, very nice to have around just in case you need to paint something. So let's get started. Alrighty guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to paint the track. We're going to paint almost each individual tie a different color. If you've ever seen track from a bird's eye view, you'll notice that each track tie is a different color. You'll notice that there are light browns, darker browns, even black. So that's what we're going to accomplish right now. So the paint that I'm using right now is this uh, raw umber. This one is 
pretty easy to find. It's from Walmart. And these Vallejos right here are uh, from Hobby Lobby. You can even get them on Amazon. They're from the set that I showed you earlier. So the first color that I'm going to use is this dark rust color. So there's the paint code there if you want to buy the individual paint. Now you don't have to use all these same paint colors. You can find your own paint. You can find different colors that you want to use. This is a chocolate brown here. There's a paint code. And also here is this color here, which is the German black brown. Now the reason I use the Vallejo paints is because they are perfect right out of the bottle. You don't need to water them down at all and the coverage is just great. The pigment and the quality of these paints are just very, very good. The problem with these paints here is that you got to water them down some. So I'll show you how to do that. But you know, it's really not such a big deal. It's easy to do. So let's check this out. So what we'll start out with is this raw umber from Walmart and I'm going to squeeze it out and you'll see how thick it is. So now when you add the water to it, you're just going to add just a little bit. Just like that. So you're just going to mix it together. So this is the consistency that you want it to be. So when you paint it on, it goes on really easily. And make sure before you squeeze these out that you give them a good shake. So these are all the colors that I'm going to use. So let's go take this to the layout and see how this comes out. Alrighty, so what you want to use is a very small precision brush. And that's because you really don't want any paint on your rails or on the ballast that you just laid here. And now that I'm applying this paint here, I'm just putting on any random tie. I'm not choosing a tie just because I really want it to be as random as possible. Now when I did my paintbrush into the different paint colors, I'm not paying attention to what color my brush is going into just because it's better that the paint mixes with a different color so that it creates an even bigger color variation for the ties here. All right, so I've painted most of the ties here. I left some of the ties the original color that the track was painted in a while back. And now that all these ties are different colors, I think this track just looks so much better and it's just a huge transformation into looking more realistic. Alrighty guys, so here are the supplies that we're going to use to weather the track. We have these Monroe Models weathering powders. These are very good weathering powders. I've been using them for a while and they're very good. You can find them on eBay. We have this chalky white, grimy black, dark earth, and medium gray. We're also going to use the same brush that we used to balance the track. And we also have three of these little bowls here. You can get these at Hobby Lobby. So let's get started. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this dark earth and I'm going to put it into a small bowl here and then I'm going to use the really plush brush and just collect just a little bit on the brush there. And then I'm going to tap off just a little bit of that powder here so that it's not so dramatic when I put it onto the track here. I'm just going to gently brush it onto the track. I just don't want it too, too aggressive just because we're really not going to weather this track a lot. And that's because it's a main line and it's not... A yard track you know typically yard tracks they're much much darker and much dirtier and main lines are a little more cleaner so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna gently apply the weathering powder to the track here just like this alrighty so the next color that I'm using is this grimy black and I did the same thing that I did with the other color I put in a small bowl and I'm applying it to the brush very sparingly and the reason is is because this pigment is very rich and it's really aggressive when you apply it um, so be very careful when you're applying this color. Uh, just put it on your brush very sparingly. Now in this portion, I'm using two different colors. I'm using a medium gray and a chalky white. And what I'm doing is I'm putting them together in the bowl and mixing them just because I wanted a lighter gray color just to give a little bit of a highlight to the track here. So you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to apply it very sparingly and just apply it layer by layer till you get the color that you want. So I really like the way this track came out. I think it looks very good and very realistic. 
the different colored ties really makes this track pop. It makes it look much more realistic than if all the track ties were the same color. Now, I think the weathering powders really took this track to a whole new level. It looks really good. The, I think the amount of grime and grit on the track looks really good. Like it's not filthy and it's not entirely clean. It looks like a main line. So I'm really satisfied with the way this track came out. So like I said earlier in the video, all these techniques are super easy to use and anybody can do this. All you got to do is try it out, put your mind to it and have a little bit of patience. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, just go ahead and put in the comment below. But if you think that your comment's going to be a little long, go ahead and shoot me an email. You can find it on my channel. Also, I'm going to try to produce more content like this in the future. So if you like this, please subscribe. And also, if you like the video, please like the video. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Talk to y'all later. Take care and keep it between the rails.